Hey everybody, I'm Mark Mazatanta and you're watching the fourth episode of Music School with Maz, where we just take an informal time to talk about um, various topics in music. Today's topic having to do with improvisation in early classical music history, which I think will surprise most people. We think of blues or rock or jazz when it comes to improvisation, but um, it did exist in earlier time periods. All right, today I've got my, uh, my dad mug here. Dad's answering service, lectures given while you wait. Yeah, my kids would agree with that. Hearing dad lectures, right? It's hard not to when you're a parent. So today, I tried something a little different. Warmed up some milk and then put Nestle's Quick in there, but not the chocolate, the strawberry, uh, just for something different. And it's pretty good. So maybe I've started something new with this. All right, so let me first of all just talk about the musical periods that I'm going to be discussing and then some of the kinds of music that would involve improvisation. Medieval times. Yeah, we go that far back, also known as the Middle Ages. Time period 400 to 1400. Yes, that's a thousand years. Um, usually music discussions start about the year 1100. Then the Renaissance, 1400 to 1600. Baroque period is next, 1600 to 1750. And we finish today's discussion with the classical period, 1750 to 1820. Now, I realize if you look up these names, um, depending on your source, you're going to get some slightly different date ranges. Okay, but at least that puts you in the ballpark. Kinds of music that involved improvisation. Organum, fantasias. Um, chacones and fugues and passacaglias, and then um, cadenzas from concerto formats. So those are the some of the types of music that that we'll briefly talk about. So let's go to organum. So check out how medieval music was notated. It's really beautiful. I'd love to have a poster of some of these pages. And some of the colored painting, um, some of that was gold and silver. So it's really beautiful. Periton is one of the main composers from this time period. And that parchment page um, comes from a book from that time period of what's called organum. So think back then to church music, big cathedrals, echoey singing of a chant tune. Okay, that's a monophonic um, texture. Mono not meaning just one person singing. A lot of people could be singing, but they're singing one pitch, nothing else going on. Okay, so it's this very free, um, echoey, calming type of music. So what organum would do is they would take an existing melody like that and then kind of add this kind of shadow second layer, usually in the interval of a fourth or a fifth called parallel organum, um, as, you know, initially improvised to add a, a, a second voice or a second layer to that. And then you add a third voice and you have something called polyphony, where you have independent lines um, moving together. Fantasias, this is just kind of a generic title that was used to mean improvise, or it would be put on a piece of music that was mimicking maybe somebody with that kind of um, spontaneous flow of improvising. And I think of lute players when I think of, of uh, that kind of music, because it's from the Renaissance, 
And me being a guitar player, I've played a lot of lute music, um, which comes from that time period. So I think of people like Francesco Davolano and John Dowlin. Um, they wrote some of these fantasias, which I'll play one at the end of the video. Then we get to the Baroque era, which everything about Baroque music was highly ornamented. Um, so you actually had like instruction books about how to ornament a certain note and they would use symbols for that and something called figured bass also was from this time period. It's, it's pretty jazzy because today as a jazzer, we get sheets of music that have symbols like A7 sharp five or D minor seven flat five. Um, and in the Baroque period, they used something called figured bass, which is very similar. Where in the basso continuo, which is like the backup band, you would have a harmony person, right? Either a lute or a harpsichord. And they would be given the bass line to the song plus figures underneath it. And it would be up to the player to decide, those figures indicated notes above the bass, but it was the player's job to decide where to put those in their chord voicings. And you might end up with something like this. This is a four part texture. So those numbers, this looks like music theory homework, which I remember very distinctly. We would do things like this all the time. Given the bass line and the figured bass, fill in the upper three voices. Bach is a famous composer from this time period, probably the most famous um, improviser in terms of creating uh, polyphonic improvisations, like a fugue or an imitative polyphony. Then in the classical period, you might think of someone like Mozart. Okay, again, another famous improviser on the piano, and then later Beethoven. So Bach, Mozart, and Beethoven all were master composers and improvisers. Remember, they were not only the composers, but they performed their works. And so if you are the composer and the performer, it doesn't take a whole lot of imagination to think that they probably adapted and changed and improvised um, from performance to performance. And they did. Um, but there's in their concertos, a concerto is a, a work for soloist backed up by orchestra. In a concerto, usually towards the end of the first movement, there's something called a cadenza, which the orchestra stops and then the soloist gets to show off a little bit with the cadenza. It could be a minute, could be two minutes. Ideally, you are to be developing ideas that were presented earlier in the piece. Um, in those time periods, the composers or the players actually would improvise those cadenzas. Nowadays, they're mostly written out. Um, and here's what one might find in the music. At this point, the orchestra stops and the soloist plays. So it could be one or two minutes. And then here, that's when the orchestra comes back in and you, you finish the piece pretty quickly after that. So those are just some instances of historical improvisation in, I guess, what we would call Western European classical music history. So what I'd like to do now is play a Fantasia by Luis Milan.
everybody. I hope you enjoyed that and learned a little something about some of those earlier time periods. I will put a link to some musical examples um, as well to those historical time periods, uh, just for fun. All right, everybody, thanks for joining me. I really appreciate you watching. Um, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you at the next video.